Greetings, Game Changers. This is Classic Games Redefined, and my name's Rich, and we're looking at another Universal Mutator. I'm going to actually show what I did with this here. These jokers down here ignore it. Anyhow, let me give you the name of the Universal Mutator we're looking at. It's, it's called Deck Stacking. And it could be considered another form of cheating people do, but you actually integrate it that way. And what I did with this game here using this technique was I took my game only on a whist, which ended up being a two-player game, and modified the game a bit using this as the core mechanic. Now, what do I mean by deck stacking? It pretty much is like it sounds, as most of the names you hope they're on here. What you do is that a set of cards that somebody has is going to be arranged by one player so the order is queued. It allows eliminated shuffling and adds a level of strategy to it. I had my game only on a whist and probably should put a link to the side or something on this here. Anyhow, I did a game called I did a game called Foreknowledge, which I was looking at a verse in the Bible, Foreknowledge, those who God foreknow predestined someone else. So I have another game called Predestination. And just was experimenting, but I figured I'd do something unique in the play mechanics. Now, the sh what it was is you're going to stack the deck. So, like, if you were playing Magic the Gathering, players can take their deck and put the cards in order in which they would come in, and they control the stack by which the way things happen. So you could do it that way. So it allows you queuing, you plan ahead of time. Anyhow, let me explain how four now. Let me explain how this game works here. Four knowledge, I believe. So, yep, four knowledge. What you do is you'll deal out two cards and you'll see in a minute how it works here I have a game built around it but just to show the play mechanic I'm dealing out 10 cards per side oh boy you know what if you're not careful you'll end up having these these cards are ace through nine ace actually ace king queen jack ten and nine so you have to rip faster, so we'll just do it this way. Move it here. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. Six. Seven. Seven. Eight. Eight. Nine. Nine. And the four cards go out of play, just like an Oni on a Whist. We don't use the declared trump card. The dealer is going to look at both cards. And look at both cards. And decide which deck they want to go with. Then they'll pass one to the other player. That the player is going to play with. And this part here ends up being a bit slow after deciding it because it just does. And then what they're going to do here is a player will take the card to deal in their hand, flip it. And so they will take this thing, flips it, and ring ranges the order. Let's say the dealer does this here. And we'll go through the cards and just put them in order. I'm just playing around here. and plays it this way let's just say i organize it this isn't the best environment to play has it here and while he's doing it then the players try to play with the dealer who arranges cards always leading and then this player plays the hand he has the freedom of control but he doesn't have the full information there is a bit of a bog down time here due to, the asynchron um, due to the nature of this, where the dealer player is going to be tying up some time. So you could give this other player here also cards. There's four cards that are out that provide uncertainty for the non-dealer player. Uh, the dealer player knows what both of these look like picked it out. So he'll lead, but before that, the non-dealer player has to pick a trump suit. So he would declare a trump suit. You go across this way, he plays, and then he has to play a card from his hand, try to win as many tricks as possible. In the basic version of the game, the trader, uh, the non-dealer player, each player scores one point per trick they take. 
that's what you're going to do. And you would alternate turns between the trader and non, uh, excuse me, between the dealer and non dealer. They alternate turns. You could also play that they both do one and they're setting up accordingly if you want to do that using two separate decks. Keep in mind this deck is a reduced one. It says King, Queen, Jack, 10, and 9. So it's 24 cards, 20 out. And that's from the Oni on a Wisp. We're not using Jokers, but you have that there. And then let me go to the advanced version here. You use the advanced version, which once you get used to it, it's bidding. It makes it more of a game. Both players will make bids secretly, and they reveal at the end of the round. The players that deal will set up the deck. Deck. Set up the deck. Scores exactly what they bid. It's kind of an old hell scoring. Has to know exactly what's going to go on do accordingly. The non-dealer, when they make a bid, if they make their bid, they score that many points. If they go over the bid, they lose. If, if they make their bid or go over, they score exactly what they bid. Else they lose as many points as they bid. So you can also play with both of them any here. Anyhow, so I set it up, and then this player would lead all the time. So by doing deck stacking... As opposed to shuffle, and you could use it in other environments also. Like I mentioned, Magic, where the players stack their own deck, or do another deck building game. I mean, a trading card game. And what you do, with the players would arrange it. It allows strategy and control over it. And you could use it like for Magic, for example. But in a game, trick taking game, you'd have it here. You would stack the deck. You could also set up an event deck. Let's say there's this cooperative game with somebody playing the game master. The game master can stack the deck for the events. So other things, as opposed to a shuffle, that's what you use it. And you can apply this to other games, like I did there, and, and Oni on a Wisp became this game here. This game here called Foreknowledge. So I wanted to show off the game Foreknowledge I had, and we'll have a link below in the description to the entry on Board Game Geek. You can read the rules. It's only one page of rules. So you can get the idea. Uh, this may not be something that's the most interesting thing to play in this form here, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. If you want to get rid of shuffling, you can end up having a player stacking a deck. So anyhow. Okay, that's about it. I do want to thank you for watching. May your die always roll five. And remember, don't hate the player. Change the game.